Hello, bonjour, and welcome to the new RT1 Exchange video. Welcome to this channel where we explore together, we learn about, and we taste the wonderful world of wine. If you're not familiar with the RT1 Exchange, it is a wine investment and trading platform as well as a wine club that has exclusive high-end wines for collectors and investors alike. It allows you to freely get your wines sent to you or to keep them in your account for an investment. Check out the link in the video description to learn more about it. It's definitely worth it. Here on this channel we look at all the best regions in the world of wine, so you get to know every one of them by their first name. We looked at Bordeaux, Burgundy, Champagne, Tuscany, Rioja, we've looked at many top wine areas all around, but there's one wine global superstar that we haven't mentioned quite yet that you definitely need to know more about, and that's Chateauneuf du Pape. Many can't even say the name properly, most don't actually really know what this appellation prestigious region is all about, and what's really special about it. After today, after watching this video, you will know all of that, of course, and more. Let's explain. You probably won't be surprised to hear that Chateauneuf du Pape is in the south of France, in the eastern part of it. It sits right at the bottom of the Côte du Rhône Appellation area, quite close to Provence, actually, in fact. But it is not right by the Mediterranean coast, not right on the coast, a little bit inland, but really not far from the coast. So it does benefit from this warm and very sunny Mediterranean climate that we love and that I enjoy here as well. I do live in the south of France. The name Chateauneuf du Pape literally means the Pope's new castle, because at some point in history the seat of the Roman Catholic Church, the Pope, wasn't based in Rome, Italy, uh, as it is today, but in a close-by city named Avignon for a few decades between 1309 and 1377. Viticulture had been established here for a long time before that by the ancient Romans as they expanded north into France from Italy and this area was an important passageway to Western Europe and they of course noticed on their way invading France and the rest of Western Europe that this area was so good for growing grapes. The soil type is what makes the terroir of Chateauneuf du Pape really special. You've probably heard about or seen images of these vineyards covered in stones, what we call the rolled pebbles or galets roulés, galets roulés in French, deposited millions of years ago by what used to be a river flowing through this area. These rolled pebbles in such density are really rare in the world of wine. You don't really see them that often anywhere. Rarely do you see vines growing, in fact, in such mineral-looking terroir. You have to know, however, that all soils in Chateauneuf aren't covered in those pebbles. It's a bit of a cliché, even though it is very typical. There are, in fact, three main soil types here, the galets roulés I've just mentioned, round stones on sandy, iron-rich red clay, the safre, that are more simply sand-dominant soils, and écla calcaire, which are limestone-rich clays that look more chalky, whiter. The more clay, in fact, in the soil, the richer and denser the texture of the wines will be, while sand provides more fruit-driven, explosive, simpler, but more exuberant and powerful wines. Yes, terroir, terroirs make a big difference. Often using a combination of those different types of soils through the art of blending, well, Chateauneuf du Pape producers can obtain a better balance and a greater complexity than if they were only using one type of soil, a big factor to the greatness of Chateauneuf du Pape. One not many talk about, but now you know. Another massive factor to the rare quality of Chateauneuf is, of course, the grapes that they use.
famously, Chateauneuf uses up to 13 different grape varieties in a single wine, blended together, including, which is unusual nowadays, blending red grapes with white grapes. Yes, they still do this to this day, and perhaps it is still allowed today because Chateauneuf was the first ever appellation to be officially registered in France and recognized by the government, the first AOC or AOP official appellation back in 1936, the very first one, before any other area. It used to be more common to blend red and white grapes in the 19th century and before, but not so much in modern winemaking. They still do it in Chateauneuf. All wines are not made from 13 different grapes, though in reality, the backbone and the majority of wines in Chateauneuf famously are made primarily from Grenache, this Spanish-French grape that makes powerful, spicy, fruity, pow powerful, punchy wines with a relatively low tannic density unless it is grown on very dry soils under high heat. Dense Grenache wines are rare in the world because it takes a lot of heat and a lot of dryness to pull it off to grow this grape to a high level of concentration. You need a lot of heat, a lot of sun, which is exactly what they have in Chateauneuf and the Mediterranean climate and the stony soils dry up and concentrate the grapes to a very high level, while the iron-rich clay and the limestone clays intensify and densify the tannic texture. So it takes this really rare combination and subtle balance of terroir to make a great Grenache wine, which is why they're rare, which is why Chateauneuf is so unique, even though it's a bit cliché to say so, but it's true. There is a particular spot in a relatively small area called the La Croix Plateau, uh, within the Chateauneuf Appellation, that's a raised plateau that has the perfect soil composition for power, harmony and balance, which makes it home to the most famous and prestigious chateaus or wineries in the area, on rolled pebbles on this iron rest clay red soil. Because the soil is so perfect on that plateau, local producers usually make wines with a very high proportion of Grenache there. This is where you'll find the most reputable and prestigious Chateauneuf-du-Pape wines that we'll mention in just a minute. Elsewhere though, where it's not as perfect as on this high up, small, relatively small plateau, on the rest of the appellation, they often need to blend in other grapes to complement the less perfect Grenache that they get there. For this, they use typical Rhone grapes, often referred to as the GSM or GSMC blend, so that's Grenache, Syrah, Mourvedre and sometimes Carignan in varied proportions. Every winery has its preferences in proportions for their own blends, their own signature. Vintages may also affect which grapes are used to, what grape delivers the better wine on each terroir under hotter or warmer yearly conditions as well. So they can play around with different grapes, different terroirs and expressions. The blending is often key to achieving harmony, density and power combined. If you want to hear the names of the other nine grapes Chateauneuf du Pape uses that I haven't mentioned here, well, they are called Clairette, Vacarez, Bourboulinque, Roussanne, you would have heard about that one, Cunoise, Muscardin, Picpoul, Picardin, and Terre Noir. And I'm sure you've noticed there are some white grapes among those ones. Which ones? Well, you tell me in the comments. Here are some names you cannot go without hearing if you're interested in Chateauneuf du Pape, the biggest stars that shine the brightest over the appellation. And those that, of course, suggest tasting if you get the opportunity. Why not? Only the finest. Let's go with 10 names here. 10 of them, although I won't have time to elaborate too much about each of them. But 10 will give you a broad understanding of some of the top names. Chateau Lanert is one of the very oldest wineries in the area and also now one of the biggest, yet extremely reputable and delicious, organically farmed 
as many vineyards are in Chateauneuf now, a lot of producers have gone organic. It's a plus, it makes for better wines, more genuine expression. Now, Chateau de Bocastel is owned by the famed Perrin family. Famously, Bocastel shared cuttings of vines with the Tablas Creek Winery in Paso Robles, or Paso Robles, California, introducing Rhone grapes to the United States, arguably sparking the success of Rhone-style wines we know today in Cali through the Rhone Rangers. It started somewhat with Bocastel. Let's mention Chateau Rayas, often acclaimed by American critics, in particular, yes, Robert Parker and others greatly helped the fame and reputation of Chateau Neuf some two or three decades ago, through the 1990s and 2000s, including Rayas, one of the really cherished wine by American critics that's made from a single vineyard area of about 32 acres, so rather small, they don't blend all that much at Rayas but a fantastic wine. You have the Domaine du Pego, a historic estate, 52 acres. They use the 13 grapes with a somewhat typical example of proportions. If you want to hear what that looks like, 80% Grenache, of course, it's Chateau Neuf, 5, 6% Syrah, 4, 5% Mourved, with the remainder being a blend of the other 10 regional grapes. Also watch out for Clos Saint-Jean and Augier Clos de l'Oratoire des Papes. Yes, it's a mouthful to say unless you're French. Those two completely or almost completely distem the grapes for a smoother tasting wine, while other wineries in the area sometimes ferment some wines with their stems for more longevity, more tannins as well, and more grep, more character and personality, they don't all do that. The fairly common practice in the area, but not for those two. There's the Domaine du Vieux Telegraph, of course, you've probably heard about before, right on that Lacro plateau I was telling you about. So 90% Grenache, they have such a good Grenache, why not, with a little Mourvedre mainly, an iconic name here, such is Chateau Forcia, whose owner, a former World War I fighter pilot, was one of the historic figures in the area, one of the first to push the, for creating the Chateau Neuf appellation, lobbying the government and so on, back in the 1920s and 1930s. Historic estate. Of course, look out for the two famous names of Rhone houses and négociants, originally from the Northern Rhone, that are so famous globally, Chapoutier, and E. Gigal, who both own fantastic terroirs and properties in Chateauneuf. I'm always a big fan of these two names, these two wineries. Gigal, in particular, owns several wineries, including those wines. If you get to try wines from those 10 wineries, which, you know, I recommend, well, you'll get a good picture of what Chateauneuf du Pape is all about. And yes, you could be called then a lucky man or a lucky woman, for sure. Oh, and while you're at it, tasting Chateau Neuf du Pape wines and exploring, well, get your hands on Chateau Neuf du Pape white wines as well from the same producers that we've just mentioned or others. They're quite rare as they only account for about 7% of the total production of the appellation, but they're some of my absolute favorite white wines on earth. For me, no questions. They are usually also based on Grenache, but the white Grenache or Grenache Blanc, a white grape, the cousin of the red Grenache. Generally blended with a bit of Claret for more fruitiness and Roussin for tension and minerality. I just love Grenache Blanc, the juiciness, the powerful notes of stone fruits, the peachiness, the punchy peachiness that comes through white peach and apricot, herbs, rich and textural wines, really salivating, oily, a bit salty as well. So gorgeous with Mediterranean style food and tapas. Try them, they're so delicious. And I'll leave it here for today. This was what you absolutely needed to know and hear about Chateau Neuf du Pape. Make sure to stay tuned to the channel as we'll explore more appellations from the Rhone in the upcoming weeks. A lot to cover the Cote Roti, 
the Hermitage and so many more that we need to talk about. The Côte du Rhône. If you're new to the channel, check out my videos about other areas. The Bordeaux, Tuscany, Barolo, Burgundy and more are explained around the channel. Champagne as well. I will see you soon in the wonderful world of wine. Take care. Cheers.